Happy birthday. Consult the doctor. This is episode, um, oh, dropped my pen. Uh, this is episode 30. So, come here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Let's answer some more of our questions, and I wanted to start with this one. Do pens with black nibs oxidize the ink? Because I read some reports saying that they do, but others say they don't. Um, I haven't done the chemical analysis. I have not checked whether when using a black nib the ink particles lose an electron. I haven't done the work, but based on what I have seen and experienced when using black nibs, you may hear the garbage being taken out, sorry. I've not experienced any problems. Now, maybe some people have, so I would love to hear from you. Comment below. Uh, but I, I happen to be using this right now. Uh, this is a Calamus pen. This has a black nib. Um, I have used Faber-Castell nibs that are black. I've, I've, I think I used the Visconti nib. In any case, I've used a number of bl black nibs. I've never had issues either with the ink coming out of the pen in a different manner, discolored manner. I've not had issues with the bottled ink. And for the record, the other way around, I have not had nibs oxidized uh, because of ink if those are black nibs either. So I don't Maybe I'm missing something, and that's entirely possible, story of my life, um, but I don't know why the black nibs in particular would do that, unless, of course, the material that is used to coat the nib to make it black, often PVD, sometimes ruthenium, there are other ways to do it, a process which, by the way, is a type of oxidation sometimes, but that's a different matter, um, unless that material somehow interacts with the ink. One would hope that in the collective wisdom of fountain pen companies, they would realize that using a material that uh, really uh, oxidizes ink is probably a bad idea. That would be my answer. I have never experienced it, but absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, as they say. Next question. So, I mean, again, let me know what, you, what your experiences are. Next question. Uh, how do I get a Lamy 2000 nib? I'm assuming a replacement nib. You don't, because Lamy doesn't sell them to end users, and that's pretty much it. Now, you may be able to go to your favorite fountain pen store and ask them if they can do a nib, sorry, nib swap for you. They may or may not, depending on the relationship you have with the store and the store policy. Um, if that doesn't work, there is, of course, also always eBay and these kinds of websites where you can sometimes find spare parts for pens. For example, I've been looking for a King of Pen nib for a while. They don't show up. Um, sorry, not King of Pen. I mean, yes, a King of Pen nib, just a nib for a Sailor King of Pen. Can't find it uh, because Sailor is another company that doesn't sell nibs and nib sections. We sometimes have come to expect that you can buy replacement nibs, but you simply can't. Not every brand does that and allow that. With Lamy, of course, it's odd because there's no issue buying a Safari nib as a separate item. But when it comes to Lamy 2000, I don't think they do it. So as far as I know, that story ends there. But again, why not look around, right? Have a look at eBay, these kinds of places, uh, maybe at pen shows, and you might be able to find them. What if you don't have uh, pen shows? Well, then there's eBay, and if that doesn't work either, then I don't know what to do. Okay. Uh, this was a good one too, I thought. All else being equal, do screw caps or snap caps keep an ink supply fresh longer? I've paraphrased a little bit, but I think we all know what the person who asked the question is getting at. Will the um, pen dry out with one cap versus the other cap, etc. I have used, uh, I would say at this point, a pretty large number of pens. I have not found one cap system to be superior to another system. I don't know this is a bit of a non-answer, but the reality is I have seen excellent snap caps that really keep a nib wet. Again, I'm having, using this Calamus pen right now, snap cap. I have not opened this and had it be dry. 
I've used snap caps where the pen does run dry. I've used screw-on caps that keep the nib very nice and wet, and I have used screw-on caps that make the pen dry out very quickly. So I'm afraid that the shortest answer here is, I guess it varies from pen maker to pen maker and sometimes even within pen makers. Sometimes I find that they do something that works in a snap cap on one model and it does not work so well as a snap cap on another model. Then you have the magnetic caps, you have all these variables that come into play. Let's not eliminate some very important factors such as the ink that you use. A drier ink will typically, in my experience, also dry out faster no matter the capping mechanism. Uh, if you are in a very dry climate uh, or very hot climate, that may affect the drying out of the pen as well. If you are somewhere it's more humid, where it's cold, whatever, etc., all these kinds of factors come into play. So in other words, as far as I'm concerned, there's no one straight answer, and even the claims that some companies make, for example, Platinum has that system that's really supposed to keep your nibs primed. I have found that sometimes it works better than other times, and that's all Platinum pens. So I don't have a definitive answer in this debate. I would just look at what works best for you. For some people who like to operate pens single-handedly a lot, for example, because of their job, of course, there are pens like the Vanishing Point that just have a retractable nib. But in those kinds of situations, if that's not an option, a snap cap might be easier because it's a lot easier to just take this off with one hand than try to unscrew something with one hand. So, you know what? Do whatever the hell you want to do. As long as other people don't get hurt, I think that's the safest uh, recommendation. Okay. Um, the final question I have, and I, I'm afraid that this particular episode is a little bit of a matter of, it's a lot of questions to which I don't seem to have an incredibly clear answer. Final question, do you have any recommendations for medium or broad nibs that start up straight away every time, remain wet as you write with them, and are a little bouncy but not flexy? No. Um, that's a very specific request, and this too depends on a lot of factors. If you're looking for that bounciness, I would say that typically you're better off with a gold nib, 14 or 18 karat. Um, typically is a bit bouncier than steel nibs, but there are clear exceptions. See uh, the Platinum 3776 pens that have fairly rigid nibs, at least the Music nib, for example, is very rigid and it is gold. Some steel nibs are a bit springier too, so I, I really don't know. Then it comes to medicine, to, sorry, to, to medicine, no, to medium and broad nibs. I guess it could be medicine. Medium and broad nibs, especially medium nibs, are incredibly ubiquitous, so you can find all kinds of medium nibs um, that start up straight away. Yeah, that is a uh, an aspect of the nib geometry, right? How well is it cut? If it has baby's bottoms, for example, it's over polished, it's not going to start up every time. But in addition to that is, again, also the factor of what ink are you using, drier or wet, or what paper are you using, coated or non-coated, what is the climate you live in. So there really are a lot of ins and outs to answer a question like that. Um, and I, I simply do not have an answer. What I will say is there are hundreds of different kinds of fountain pens out there, and there are some people like me who have done a lot of reviews on pens. So maybe watch a couple of reviews, find a pen that seems to appeal to you, and then consider purchasing that pen. I will say that I have not ever found a perfect pen. The closest pens that I have seen that have come to perfection are pens that I have sent to a nibmeister, and that nibmeister has then worked on that pen to make it right to my specifications. And any nibmeister worth his or her their salt will be able to create a nib for you that does not start up, or sorry, that, no, that, 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 that does start up, that does not have startup issues, sorry, a nib that will work fine every time, a nib that will keep writing. I have had issues with pens that start off wet, get drier, and stop writing. That is an air exchange issue. For example, Old Wind Classic, if I use that with a, um, with a cartridge converter, it always runs dry after about a paragraph. If I use that with a cartridge, I can write forever. A nibmeister can probably fix that in that pen. I've chosen not to have that fixed because I just use it with a cartridge and I'm fine. But there you go. In other words, I think the moral of this long and somewhat ranting story is seek out a nibmeister. Get the pen that you like, 
and then factor in the cost of a Nibmeister. I have video on Nibmeisters, and we're going to repeat all that information here. There's a video on Nibmeisters with recommendations. Check out that video, send the pen there, tell them what you want. It should always start up, it should be pretty wet, and then they will do that for you. You pay for this service, but you are pretty much guaranteed to get a pen that writes exactly to your specifications, which out of the box, some pens will, some pens don't, etc. I hope that answer made sense. Uh, if anyone has recommendations for an, uh, a pen with a medium or broad nib that starts up every single time that remains wet and is a little bouncy but not flexing, of course, feel free to leave a comment below. This was episode 30 of Consult the Doctor. I hope that this is still useful. These videos get uh, typically a couple fewer views than uh, the um, actual reviews, but I, I do seem to get the impression that people enjoy it. Those people who watch them seem to enjoy these videos. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below. I will get to them. It may take a little while because I always record a couple of these in a row, so it may take a while, but I try to get to every question. And that's pretty much it. I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching, and I will gladly see you later. Bye-bye.